This is problem N7 from the 2006 International Mathematical Olympiad shortlist. It makes a bold claim. For any positive integer n, there exists an integer m, such that n divides 2 to the power m plus m. This seems unlikely. How can one guarantee such an m exists for every conceivable n? Let's construct the proof. The condition of divisibility is best expressed using modular arithmetic. Our goal is to find an integer m that solves a specific congruence. This is the condition we must satisfy. The variable m appears in both a linear term and an exponential term, which makes this difficult to solve directly. A standard technique is to decompose an into its power of 2 and odd parts. We write an as 2 to the power k times an odd number d. Since these parts are co-prime, the Chinese remainder theorem allows us to split the problem into an equivalent system of congruences. We must find an M that satisfies both conditions simultaneously. Before diving into the full solution, let's see why a simpler approach fails. This will motivate the more sophisticated machinery required. One idea is to satisfy the first congruence by choosing M to be a positive multiple of 2 to the K. This choice ensures M is congruent to 0 modulo 2 to the K and that M is at least K. Thus, 2 to the M is congruent to 0 and M is congruent to 0. The first congruence is satisfied. But when we substitute this into the second congruence, we are left with this. The variable C appears both in an exponent and as a linear term. There is no straightforward way to solve such an equation for C. This approach hits a wall. This difficulty shows we need a more robust method. Instead of constraining M from the start, we will prove we have more flexibility by strengthening the claim. Here is our claim, S of D. The key is the introduction of a new free parameter, A. We claim we can find an M that is congruent to any A. We choose modulo 2 to the K while simultaneously solving the congruence modulo D. We prove this by strong induction on D. The base case, D equals 1, is trivial. The second congruence is modulo 1, so we simply choose M equals A. Now, we assume our claim is true for all odd integers smaller than D. Let L be phi of D. Euler's Todian theorem gives us control over the exponent. Let G be the GCD of L and D. Since for D greater than 1, phi of D is less than D, it follows that G is strictly less than D. Since G divides the odd number D, G must also be odd. As G is an odd integer less than D, our inductive hypothesis, S, of G applies. Applying S of G with the same K and A gives us an integer M0 that satisfies our conditions modulo G. This M0 is our starting point. We now search for our final solution M by adding A a corrective term to M0. Our only free parameter is J. Let's substitute this into the second congruence. We split the exponent. By Euler's theorem, 2 to the L is congruent to 1. This simplifies the expression significantly. This leaves us with a linear congruence to solve for J. A solution for J exists if and only if the GCD of the coefficient and the modulus divides the right-hand side. Because D is odd, it's co-prime to 2 to the K, so the GCD simplifies to G. Our condition becomes G must divide 2 to the M0 plus M0, which is guaranteed by our choice of M0. So, a solution for J exists. The theory of linear congruences states that the general solution for J forms an arithmetic progression. Substituting this back shows that M itself must form an arithmetic progression. Since the common difference is positive, we have an infinite set of solutions for M that we can make arbitrarily large. This completes the inductive step.
Now we use our powerful proven claim to solve the original problem. For our original n, which equals 2 to the k times d, we apply the claim s of d. Here is the crucial step. We strategically choose our free parameter a to be 0. The claim now guarantees an m that is a multiple of 2 to the k, and also solves the congruence for d. Now we use the unboundedness property. We are guaranteed to find a solution m from this infinite set that is also greater than or equal to k. This single value of m now satisfies all our original conditions. The congruence modulo d is satisfied by the claim. And the congruence modulo 2 to the k is satisfied because both m and 2 to the m are congruent to 0. The proof is complete. So what has this exercise demonstrated? The problem initially seemed intractable. The solution was not to find m directly, but to prove a much more powerful structural result using strong induction. By adding a constraint, the variable a, we gained the flexibility needed to build the solution. This demonstrates a common theme in mathematics. Sometimes proving a harder, more general statement is the only viable path forward. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this mathematical journey and found the proof insightful, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel for more mathematical explorations. Your support helps us create more content like this.